guys, welcome back to my channel. Sass here. I'm here to do not a review, but a recap of tonight's episode of Love After Lockup. Now, I usually put this up on Saturday, but honey, after watching this, honey, I tied my hair up, threw on a little dress, and I said, I'm about to film it right now. Y'all, what was that? Honey, this episode was drier than Vince's chicken. <laughs> we cannot vent, y'all. Can I just vent for a little bit? Okay. Now, I know season one off the chain. Okay. Season two, we had the trio of fools. Okay. We had Latino heat. We had Clint and Crackhead Tracy. Okay, we know all that. It is hard to follow up with that. But this is it. Shall we? Now, I know it's hard finding people who want to participate in this reality show where, you know, you know, inmate.com, me to inmate.com and it's hard. Slim pickets. But this is it. Child, this episode was real dry. Okay? I'm not going to go step by step by what happened. Because nothing happened. Nothing happened. This is probably going to be my shortest recap ever. <laughs> I mean nothing. All right. So, we have... Lizzie and Daniel, they spent a whole week together before he got, you know, locked up. And Lizzie, she's changing, you know, her life around. You know, she's a full-time student. She wanted us to know that several, several, several times, okay? His mama is with Lizzie to go and um, pick up um, Daniel, okay? Now, his mama... <laughs> His mama wants to know, is Lizzie a good girlfriend for her son? She wants to make sure that she ain't keeping no secrets from her son. You know, does she have another boyfriend? Is there another man that, you know, she needs to know about? And Dad, she also wants to know why Lizzie has not went to go and visit her son. Okay. Daniel's mom feels like that Lizzie is not doing enough to be supportive as Daniel's girlfriend. All right. She thinks that Lizzie should be more supportive financially, emotionally, spiritually. Okay. Well, Lizzie was like, listen, I'm a full-time student. Money is hard. I have put $300 on the phone just so I can talk to him. All right. Now, listen here, Mama Daniel. Okay, instead of you worried about if Lizzie is a good girlfriend for your son, maybe you should focus in on why your son was in prison to begin with. And how you can help him, okay, when he gets out to make sure he stay on the good path. Instead of you worry about what type of girlfriend Lizzie is, you need to worry about your own son. You need to sit back and think, well, what did, what did I write? You too busy worried about Lizzie put money on the books, child. Mama Daniel, if you don't sit down somewhere, and then Daniel was like, you know, Lizzie and Mama's not getting along. You know, Mama is very, very overprotective. She all up in my business, child. Mm -mm. No. Absolutely not. Two youngins. Two youngins. And as we know, Lizzie... Yes. Okay. Lizzie has a secret. All right. Let's move on. Okay. So this is real short and sweet. Angela and Tony. All right. Tony, he's out of prison. All right. He has a curfew. He has to be at the halfway house by 720. Okay. But you know, he don't want no BJ from Angela. He wants a steak. Angela is horny. <laughs> Honey, Angela is horny. She just don't understand why while Tony was in prison, he was nothing but sex, 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 sex. Talking about sex, how when he sees her, you know, he gonna lay it on her. But now that he's on the outside, mm-mm. 
He don't want none of that. Not quite yet. Tony says that he wants it to be special the first time they have sex, okay? He don't want to treat Angela as a two-bit whore. Now, that's all sweet and all, Tony. How are you treating her as a two-bit whore when this is supposedly your woman? <laughs> that's not treating her as a whore. That's treating her as your woman, your girlfriend, the woman that you want to be with. You having sex with her is not treating her as a whore. Honey, I don't buy. Angela, honey, Tony don't want to sleep with you. Okay. He's just not that into you. You should know this, okay? I mean, so she's making every excuse. He's making every excuse on why he ain't sleeping with her. So they went out for that steak dinner that she paid for. And, you know, they were just enjoying each other's company. And time went by. She's running a little late, getting him to the halfway house so he can meet curfew. Everything is fine. He was there by 720. They gave a little kiss to each other. And she says that this was the loneliest she has ever felt. I see right now this season, I'm going to feel sorry for Angela. I'm going to feel real sorry for her. Whew, Lord, let me get through this. All right, now let's talk about the Trio of Fools 2.0. Okay? Let's just talk about it. We have Lacey. Lacey is at the prison picking up Shane. Okay? He gets out, kissy, kissy, huggy, huggy, and I will say Shane is cute. Yeah, y'all heard me right. I said he was cute. <laughs> so, of course, he didn't have no problem in touching all over his woman, slobbering, you know, his woman down. He didn't use that bit about he don't want to have sex with her because, you know, she he don't want her to feel like a two-bit whore. Honey, Shane was like, let's get in on that. <laughs> Honey, he ain't got no problem with it. He was like, listen, it's time. Okay, so they're going down the road, and of course, y'all know, Lacey has a whole other man that she's in love with. She wants to, you know, get married to. She's engaged to, okay, but she up in there with Shane. And did y'all see when, she was, when he got out of prison? She says, oh my God, he is so freaking hot. across from the prison. Can you imagine living across from a prison? Child, I will be the, I'll be up in that kitchen window, living room window, den, when I don't care what bedroom window, I'll be just like this. Who getting out today? <laughs> Child, I'll be scared there'll be some type of prison break. Honey, they gonna run straight to your house. No, ma'am. Uh, no, sir. Okay. So, of course, they're going down the road. And, of course, John, the love of her life, is blowing her phone up. And, of course, Lacey, she can't answer it because she got Shane in the passenger seat. So, she stops the car. She gets out of the vehicle and walks on up the road to talk to John. Now, here is Shane. Shane said, well, you know, I, I do find it a little strange that she gets out the car to talk to someone. Now, this is after she gives Shane the passcode to her phone. Lacey. Not smart. Okay. So, Lacey is outside the vehicle, finally talking to John. John know what's up. John was like, what's up with you? I've been calling you and calling you and you ain't answering. Honey, she's stumbling over her words. He done call her in a couple of lies. She Remember, she was sitting outside her house with the car full of groceries waiting for the rain to stop. Now it's done led to, you know, work and, you know, she couldn't get to the phone. He, you know, she's been busy. John was on the other end of that phone like, mm-hmm. Oh, okay, 
okay, baby girl. All right, that's cool. Well, I won't let you go. And she was like, well, why are you being like this? He was like, oh, no. It's all good. Okay. I'm going to let you go, baby girl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Child. I was like, Lacey, if you don't hang that phone up, you better. Because the more you talk, the more you bury in yourself, child. Let's move on to Vincent and Amber. All right. So Vincent and Amber done made their way to the Airbnb. All right. He done got them, he done got them some meat or something for dinner. So he's, you know, cooking on the grill. Amber's sister calls. And they introduce themselves. Vincent, Vincent looks like and seems like he's a cool dude. Okay. So Amber is telling her sister that it's weird. Okay, different in real life than how he was when they was communicating, you know, in prison. And it's awkward and it's weird. And child, he done pulled out some chicken. <laughs> Honey, I bet you he didn't even wash the chicken. Just straight out the packet. And he put it straight on that grill. I said, well, look at him, Vincent. And she was like, did you even season it? And he was like, well, no. I said, So, of course, it's 90-90 time, you know. She fresh out the prison, all right. She been locked up. So, of course, boom, boom time. She's not ready. She's not in the mood. So, she goes into a separate bedroom. Vincent is in another bedroom. You can't even stay in the same bed. <laughs> Honey, Vincent, listen here, boo. Amber. It's not that into you either. Okay? Now, here we got Amber ain't trying to have sex with Vincent. We got Tony not trying to have sex with Angela. Now, what is going on here? Dry. This episode, dry. Okay? Just dry. All right. I think this is the last couple. And if it's not the last couple, I'm sorry. All right? I think it is. Cheryl and Josh. Okay? Cheryl. She is on her way to pick up Josh from the prison. She has on this little black lace dress with heels waiting outside for her man. He come out, kissy, kissy, huggy, huggy. Did I miss anything? Y'all, did I miss anything? Tell me below what I missed. Whew! Y'all, that's the episode. I'm telling you, that was it. Y'all, let me know what you think below. Let me know what you thought below. Okay, because it wasn't much. So, just let me know. Let's have a little quick conversation. And hopefully next week, oh Lord, it will get better because... <laughs> Y'all know the drill. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And until next week, friends. Bye.